Atlanta here at Villain Theater Online. We're coming to you live. That's right. We are still putting on live comedy content. The quarantine may have shut down our physical theater, but the shows just don't stop at Villain Theater. So we are putting out our shows live for you every single weekend, Friday, Saturday, and even Tuesdays right here on YouTube. You get to be part of the show tonight. That's the fun thing about tuning in live. We know you got lots of stuff that you can watch, but we thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have an amazing show for you tonight. We have our Comedy Clash, our Friday night short form show, which will be kicking the night off with a bunch of short form, fast paced improv games, lots and lots of fun. And then after that show, we have something very special. We have our musical theater showcase performance. If you've not heard about our musical theater class, tonight's the night where you get to see the results of that. We have a group of students who've been working very hard on their musical theater training, and tonight they're gonna showcase their work for you. So let's get started right away with Comedy Flash. Come on out, cast the Comedy Flash. I'm good, and you? So good, so good, so good. I'm a virtual so. background, geez. Oh my goodness, we gotta get the virtual background set up. You know, it is live theater. You get to see how the sausage is made. That's always such a weird expression. Anyway, we're gonna get started right away with a little game that we like to call press conference. So press conference is a game where we're gonna kick off our show with a topic that you get to suggest to us. So what we need from you is a suggestion in the YouTube chat of a press conference subject. And remember, it's a comedy show, so it can be anything at all. Keep it silly. What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> all right, I see some good ones coming in in the chat. Oh, I love it. All right, let's bring you back on screen. We're going to have a wonderful press conference today. Very important subject matter. It's going to be being delivered by none other than our own Joseph Rodriguez. Joseph, your subject is coming to us in the chat from Geek Tomb. It is a haunted castle. Please be. Thank you very much. We are talking about uh, the haunted castles of Scotland of course. Uh, the six haunted castles, as we all know, uh, Moraiga, Foraiga, Boraiga, and, well, etc. You know the rest. Folks, these haunted castles are all for sale as we currently speak. Uh, no one is buying them. So, of course, this press conference is for you to write in your lovely papers so that we can sell them and we can get rid of these ghosts for good. So, I'll be taking some questions. Yes, Noah. Hi, Noah. With you rang with the you rang report. I was um, I was just wondering. I heard that Moraiga, that the uh, that the ghosts within Moraiga are all of dead royalty. Are there any other castles that can claim that? Yes. Well, that is a very good question. The dead of Moraiga uh, are all royalty. They are all from the sixth century, which is weird because there were inhabitants in there long after. Um, but with that being said, no, all castles just dead royal people. I don't know. Yes, Lisa. Uh, yeah, Lisa Legend, Predator Natural Press. Uh, there is word that Disney wants to buy some of the ghosts, not the castle, just the ghosts, and transport them to Orlando for their haunted house. Is there any truth in that? That is actually very true. Uh, Lisa, I don't want you to be reporting that quite yet, okay? I'm going to put a kind of moratorium until uh, the end of July 4th. Uh, but yes, we are actually transporting them as we, uh, as, as many sequariums have done to whales. We just put them in little uh, containers full of ectoplasm, and they get shipped right off to Disney. Thank you. Yes, more questions here. Uh, Victoria. So, uh, Victoria here with DBZ Network. I have a question. Mm. All the ghosts are protesting because they feel like you're going to gentrify their uh, place of um, habitants. And what do you have to say to those ghosts? Well, I'm very sorry to those ghosts. We have explained it to them a hundred times. If they can just come up with some money, if they can maybe, you know, sell their labor, do something. I mean, they've just been squatting there for centuries and centuries. I mean, we've you know, we've put up so many eviction notices, Victoria, that we don't even know what to do anymore. Okay. More questions, folks. Patrick. Hey, yo. Yeah, this is Patrick from uh, from Real 
real estate, you know, keeping it real estate. Sorry, I misspoke. Mm. Yes. Now, uh, my my consumers like to ball on a budget. So are they getting some type of discount because of all the ghosts and supernatural shit? Yes, we are actually selling this right now for only six Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen. That is something you can put in the press release. It's only six Bitcoin and nobody wants to take it. For the love of God, will anyone buy this castle and the rest of the five of them? Janellis. Hi, uh, Janellis from Santeria Daily. Uh, the ghosts uh, who are protesting also would like to know if uh, they are allowed their uh, freedoms uh, uh, given to them under the First and Second Amendments. Yes, that that is very, very true. Uh, Janellis, I'm, I'm glad that you're here reminding us that, of course, the Constitution applies to Scottish ghosts. Um, and, and with that being said, yes, they do have their freedom of religion. Uh, they do have their, their, their right to express their opinion. But they've got to pay money, folks. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're living there for free. I mean, nobody lives in America or in Scotland for free, for God's sakes. Come on. Victoria. I heard there's a rumor that you're actually going to demolish it and turn it into a mall. What do you have to say about that? Uh, well, uh, I, you would find that that rumor is unverified at the moment. Uh, there are no plans, as we see, uh, that there are any malls that are going to be be built uh, anywhere near Scotland. I mean, <laughs> Scottish people in malls, are you kidding me? Lisa. Uh, yes. Uh, there's also a rumor that, you know, that, that this, the uh, Loch Ness Monster, you know, that castle there, uh, they haven't found a Loch Ness Monster, so it, people feel like it's, they're losing part of their cultural heritage if you sell these castles to someone that's going to turn it into a sideshow with ghost tours. What do you think of that? Yes. Well, uh, Lisa, little known secret here, uh, the Loch Ness Monster is just a conglomeration of sea otters that actually gather so that they look like a giant Loch Ness Monster. Uh, keep it on the down low, but the Scottish government is actually uh, allowing us to do this so that we can bring tourism. And that brings me to my final question, folks. <laughs> Noah? Hi, yes. Um, there's a rumor going around that Scott Stapp of Creed fame wants to buy all of them and just create an amusement park called Scotland. Is that true? Well, if that were true, which I hope to God it's not, it's only going for six Bitcoin, Scott. So with arms wide open, baby, come and get it. Thank you very much. That's our time. Okay. And that's it for press conference. Well done, everybody. <laughs> oh my God, I would go, would I go to that amusement park? I don't know. Convince me. Put it in the chat. That <laughs> sounds amazing. All right. We're going to go right into our second game of the night. You know, we've gone from the press. Now we need to go to the court. And so this is a game we call Objection. Objection is a game where we are going to debate a topic before your very eyes. A topic of such ridiculous seriousness, it can only come from your suggestions. So in the chat, go ahead and give us a suggestion for tonight's debate. Now that said, it's a comedy court. So these aren't real debate topics. These are silly debate topics. Things like Coke versus Pepsi or red versus blue. What are uh, the topics that we're gonna debate tonight? Put them in the chat. <laughs> uh, the chat is on fire tonight, I love this. You know, while you're there typing, go ahead and hit that like button as well on YouTube. That really helps us out. Ooh, ooh, I'm seeing some good ones. I am seeing some good ones. Okay, I got one that I like. I got one that I like, so let's go back on screen. And I'm gonna say, this courtroom isn't the same without our all-time bailiff. And so please help me in welcoming them out to the stage. The one and the only Lisa Legend, come on. Hi, Judge. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Doing all right. You know, it's been a, it's, it's not been a good week. We had a lot of people go down here in Florida with the, uh, you know. With all the comedy issues. I know. It's been yeah. rough. Real life and comedy life. It, it's it's yeah. been rough. I know. Yeah, it's been rough. Well, <laughs> let's go ahead and bring in our counselors for today's debate. They're going to be Janellis and Noah, as well as Patrick and Victoria. Come on out. Hello to the four of you. Welcome, welcome. Pleasure to be all here. Right. So here is the subject that we will be debating tonight. One 
that I think is probably the measure of all that is cool, okay? It is going to be coming from uh, Hannah Chloe in the chat. It is motorcycle versus scooter, all right? So Janellis and Noah, you're gonna have motorcycle. Patrick and Victoria, you are going to be arguing for scooter. Bailiff, please take it away. Oye, oye, the villain online court of questionable justice is now in session. Counselors, please raise your right hands. Do you hereby solemnly swear to accept the duties and responsibilities in the resolution of this senseless matter in the case of motorcycles versus scooters to the very best of your abilities? Say I do. I do. I do. I do. Well, in that case, members of our online jury, please, if you'll remain seated and welcome back to the bench, our honorable Judge Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let us begin with the opening arguments now for motorcycles. Yeah, go ahead. Beautiful people of our online jury, thank you for joining us tonight. Motorcycles, how are they inherently superior to scooters? Well, a motorcycle is plainly not a little bitch. That's right, a motorcycle can go even faster than a car, faster than a truck, not faster than a plane, but pretty damn close. When you see somebody going across country and they've got their leather jacket on and their big old helmet and they're riding their nasty hog, it's not on the scooter. It's not on a Vespa. This ain't the beach. We're going cross country. We're gonna need an American Harley Davidson and, and whatever you want, Yamaha, whatever. I'll take whatever kind of motorcycle, but a scooter? A scooter's for going to the, you know, to the grocery store down the block. A scooter is for a stroll around town, but a motorcycle is a state of mind. It's a way of life, and it's the most efficient and gas efficient form of travel. Thank you. All right, well, strong opening argument. Not sure all of it's true, but hey, it's a comedy court. So now <laughs> let's have opening argument for Scoot Scoot. You mind, Patrick? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Great. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, this is a very important debate uh, with motorcycles versus scooters. Of course, we all know that scooters are superior for the obvious reasons, right? Um, number one, you can carry lots of shit on it, right? There's a there's a back area where you can put your things in there, your purse, your bag, your your backpack for the beach, a picnic basket, anything that you want. All your snacks, they fit so nice and and conveniently behind your seat, okay? The second thing is what uh, Councillor Janellis mentioned about it being a stroll, taking it a stroll around town or going to the grocery store with it. It's portable. You can take it anywhere. That's the best part. You want to go to the grocery store? Just zip on in, pick up your things, leave. You don't even have to pay. Just you right out there, okay? In the year of 2010, JD Powers and Associates actually ranked it the number one safest way to travel, okay? Not motorcycles, not airplanes, not cars, scooters. Why? Why? Because the fastest you can go is 15 miles an hour. And frankly, people, that's all we need, okay? More lives saved. Why? Because we have scooters. All right, all right. Strong opening arguments for scooters. Now, let's go right into the cross-examination round. There are facts flying around this courtroom faster than you know fake news. So let's let's just get into the cross X. So we're gonna have uh, let's see let's have uh, scooters first interrogated by motorcycles. Counselor Counselor Haig, in your argument you mentioned that you can take a motor you can take a scooter to a grocery store and then just leave with your items. Are, are you for shoplifting? Uh, absolutely not. Enough said. Okay, now let's have the cross-examination of motorcycle by Scooter. Counselor Santos, thank you so much for your argument earlier today. Um, I just have a few things of questions, if that's okay. Um, now, in it, you mentioned that it, motorcycles are better because you get to go cross-country. Is that correct? Sure. Okay, what, what do you have against supporting your local economy? 
Nothing at all. But I do remember that one of my favorite Disney movies was Motocross. And that wouldn't have happened with a scooter. Boom. All right. Well, now that the cross-examination has happened, we're going to go right into the final round. Closing arguments. Let's begin with the closing arguments for motorcycles. Ladies and gentlemen of our virtual jury, may I remind you where we are right now? We are in the United States of America, where we are free to go as fast as we want, when we want, to wear what we want. If we want to wear leather jackets and put on our helmets, shit, we could do that with our motorcycles. We could do that in our homes, we could do that in public, but the best place to do it is on your motorcycle riding free. How do you know when there's a scooter behind you, right? It does that little fart of a, of a horn. No one wants to hear that. You know how a motorcycle's coming behind you? You hear that engine roar. You hear the engine that sounds like the heartbeat of the American spirit. That's how you know motorcycles are superior to scooters. We don't live in France where you need to have something to hold your baguette while you drive around on little cobblestones. No, we're here on the highway. We're here on the freeway. Because what are we in America? Free. Choose motorcycles. Wow. Wow, the freeway. All right. Now, <laughs> the closing arguments for scooters. Beautiful ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're here today to discuss a very important topic. You've heard a lot about motorcycles versus scooters, um, but I'm, uh, I'm afraid to say the opposing counsel has been lying to you, okay? Now, uh, first off, in the first thing that, uh, one of the things that my lovely co-counselor said, Counselor Santos, was that uh, motorcycles are the best, uh, the most energy efficient way to travel. Simply not true, because motorcycles run on gas. Scooters can run on many different things. They can run on electricity. There are some scooters that use your willpower as you scooch across. That's right, flip scooters. Absolutely, the versatility that scooters bring, alone in and of itself, prove its superiority. However, there's even more things. That's right. You know, uh, they mentioned that motorcycles are the fastest way. Great, sure, why not? But I feel like in these trying times, the one thing that I've, you know, taken advantage of, the one so many, is that I've been able to take things slow, to notice things, you know, to take it in. Some of my favorite memories growing up was the trips to the supermarket, the trips to the park, to the local park, investing in my community. Because while this country is great and vast and wonderful, why are we trying to go somewhere else? What are we trying to run from? With scooters, you don't have to run. With scooters, you can just scoot, scoot on by. And you know what? Thank you. Oof, all right, strong arguments from all around. Bailiff, please come out as well as all the counselors. We're gonna need to take this to a vote. So please take it away. Ladies and gentlemen of our online jury, it is now time for you to deliberate. You must decide between motorcycles and scooters, and you will do this by dropping into the chat the team that you think presented the best case. The first team that gets three entries determines which side will tip the scales of justice and be victorious. I love it every time Lisa says, tip the scales of justice. <laughs> I know. All right, watch in the chat. I'm so mad that I name dropped a Disney movie. Wow. I think it is clear. Bailiff, I don't know if you're seeing this with me, but it is crystal clear. We've got a winner to announce. I'm not seeing it. Go ahead. Okay. The do winner. What you do best, Judge. It's not Zen and the Art of Scooter Makings. The winner is Motorcycles. Yeah, baby! Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Man, so cool. So cool. Uh, you know, I... Uh, <laughs> I love that game because every week we get to figure something out, you know, and, and that was one that I didn't realize it was keeping me up at night, but now that we know it, I'm going to sleep like a baby. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we are working our way through our show. We have so much more show for you. We're going to go right into our next game, taking a turn for the dramatic now if, uh, with a game that we are calling Sincerely Me. Sincerely Me is a game where we revive the lost art of letter writing. 
That's right, our actors are going to improvise two characters writing letters to one another, either in an old tiny form, perhaps a modern form, that's not the point. But the point is, is that there's going to be a story that unfolds right before your eyes. What we need is just a suggestion of any old object that's going to inspire the subject of tonight's scene. So put it in the chat and we'll take a look. <laughs> and everyone's mind's in the same place here. All right, let's see what we get in the chat. All right, I think I got one that I like. Let's come back on screen and let's welcome the actors who will be playing this game with us tonight. They are Victoria and Noah. Come on out. Hello to the two of you. Hello to the one of you. <laughs> That's right. All right. So uh, this is Sincerely Me, and the subject of tonight's show is going to be telescopes. Coming to us from, who said that in the chat? Joseph Perez. Uh, so telescopes, your suggestion? Go ahead. Begin when you're ready. Hey, Monique. Smiley face emoji. Um, I'm sorry to inform you that I opened your mail and found out that you didn't get the internship at NASA. Want to get frozen yogurt to calm your sadness? Question mark, ice cream emoji, send. Hey, Craig. I don't know how many times I told you not to go through my mail. Sweating, happy face emoji. I'm okay, and you know I'm lactose intolerant, so no thank you to the frozen yogurt. By the way, do you have this month's rent? Send. Ha 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 ha, Monique. You're so funny. Winky face emoji, cowboy hat smiley emoji. You know the only reason I check your mail is to make sure that nobody's watching you. You know, the big guy. By the way, they also have sorbet. You like sorbet? Question mark? Oh, P.S. You know I don't believe in rent. How dare you, said. Okay, you're, listen, delete. I need you to pay by the end of this week, or I promise, chops lock, I am going to get your ass evicted. We have this conversation every month for the last four months. I am sorry you have no other place to go, but it's hard enough on me to pay every single month by myself. That was the agreement. Pay your side. Send. Monique, you know how hard this has been for me since I got fired four months ago from my job at the zoo, milking the tarantulas. Spider emoji. I'm very sorry that our friendship could not move on beyond the, this landlord rentee agreement. And you know what, to make up for this, I would still like to get you some sorbet. Are you interested? It is dairy free hyperlinking you to, uh, with a link under Sorbet to the Wikipedia page for Sorbet. Send. Hey, it's funny, but I've never actually tried Sorbet before. Do you think they have it in Mango and I am going to call the police now. Um, I'm sorry this isn't working. Send. Hey, Monique. Uh, cat smiley face. Um, 
The officers allowed me one last text message before they take me away in the vehicle. Um, I know that they usually give one phone call, so I decided that it would be to you. Um, I called the lo I called the uh, store bay place before the cops knocked down my door, and yes, they said they had mango. By the way, would you happen to be able to bail me out? Kind of low on cash, money emoji. Thank you, XO, XO. Sad. And scene, very good. <laughs> nice job, the two of you. I was really, really wrapped there. I was wondering if the sorbet was gonna actually get them out of the rent, because if so, I'm never paying rent again. So that'd be amazing. <laughs> nice job, nice job. All right, so we are gonna go into our next game. Our next game is a high energy competition game. Are you all ready for this? It's called Try That On For Size. So this is one where we're gonna need quite a few suggestions. We're gonna need a lot of suggestions of physical activities that you can do with your body. So these can be gestures, uh, these are you know physical activities that you might do, uh, and then our actors are going to repurpose those into different things that they look like. You'll see what I mean as we get going. So go ahead and start putting in the chat. We need a couple for this one. And ones that we hear all the time are things like twerking, things like uh, brushing your teeth. So get creative with it. I know you got it. By the way, it is so good to see so many of you in the chat. We have more than 30 people watching with us live tonight. That is wonderful. We're so glad you're joining us. While you're here, if you wanna really help out the theater, help out the feed, go ahead and hit that like button in YouTube. It's the little thumbs up button. That helps, helps YouTube know that people like the video. So it helps, uh, it helps us a lot. That'd be great. All right, these are some good suggestions coming in. <laughs> Someone really wants to see Noah twerk. I don't know, we might make him do it, we'll see. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Okay, I see some good ones. All right, let's come back on screen. And like I said, this is a head-to-head -head battle. So we're gonna bring out two actors at a time and they're gonna compete. The rules are no repeats and they have to actually look like what they're doing still. So the first two actors to come out are gonna be Joseph and Victoria. Come on out. Okay, so your suggestion is going to be sharpening a pencil. So Victoria, you start us off. Let's see what that looks like. I'm sharpening a pencil. Try that on for size. I'm screwing in a, uh, a, a pencil sharpening. Try that on for size. I'm peeling my cucumber. Try that on for size. I'm inserting a dildo into a sex doll. Try that on for size. <laughs> I'm checking the flexibility of my wrist because I think I have carpal tunnel. Try it on for size. I'm adjusting this telescope, but it just goes one way. Try that on for size. I'm, ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> ah, you're out of there, Victoria. Good, uh, good try, good try. That was a good round. All right, the next two coming out are going to be Noah and Lisa. Come on out. Hey, hey, all right. So your suggestion is going to be knitting, but not just anything, knitting a hat. The chat was specific. All right, so Lisa, you start us off. I'm knitting a hat. Try that on for size. I'm a conductor for a very tiny orchestra. Try that on for size. I'm tossing spaghetti. Try that on for size. Watch my two action figures fight. Kapow, kapow, kapow. Try that on for size. I'm directing traffic. Try this on for size. I'm hitting a little snare drum. Try that on for size. I'm making saltwater taffy. Try that on for size. I'm putting chopsticks in my mouth. Look, I'm a walrus. Try that on for size. I'm opening a book. Try that on for size. What's in this package? What's in this package? What's in this package? <gasps> a small horse. <laughs> I'm clapping silently. Try that on for size. I'm boxing a very small child. Try that on for size. I'm kneading the dough. Try that on for size. I am playing with Play-Doh. Try that on for size. I'm waving flags in the parade. Try that on for size. I'm that little monkey doll with the symbols. Try that on for size. 
I'm. Uh, 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 wow, you're out of there, Lisa. Good. Oh my goodness, that was an epic round right there. Well done, both of you. Now let's bring out our last two actors, Janellis and Patrick. I'm gonna oh. stand up. Yeah, stand up, stand up. Okay, so we had a lot of good suggestions in the chat. Um, I just like this one because you can interpret it however you want. It is summoning a demon. Yes. <laughs> You are well, so we, have, we have plenty of experience, Jeff. I am sure. So, Janellis, you show us what that looks like and start us off. I'm summoning a demon. Try that on for size. I'm summoning the chi to do my Kamehameha attack. Try that on size. I'm performing for a stadium of people. Try that on for size. I am preparing my fists to punch a bitch. Try that on for size. I'm getting you to join my cult. Try that on for size. Uh, I am flexing for the girl right there. Try that on for size. I'm confused about how to use a pull-up bar. Try that on for size. I am throwing the, the softball uh, underhand for my two twins. Try that on for size. I'm doing yoga. Try that on for size. I am making a point. Try that on for size. <laughs> I am uh, kneading dough. Try that on for size. I am elbowing behind me they're attackers try that on for size i am bench pressing a lot of weight try that on for size i am a dance instructor and this is the move try that on for size i am sick of patrick rodriguez oh, no. <laughs> man i don't know about you but i felt like that was that was motivational that was powerful that round that was great good job everybody that is try that on for size we are cruising through tonight's show. We have just a couple of games left for you, and then we're gonna take a short, short, short break and have our musical theater showcase. But I wanted to take this opportunity to just once again thank everybody out in the audience. We're approaching 40 viewers on the live stream right now, which is fantastic. People are also watching over on Facebook and other places, but YouTube is where we take the comments during the show. Um, and you know, if you're fans of Villain Theater and you're thinking, man, I love this place, I love watching these shows, we, uh, we do our best to bring you a little bit of happiness every week often as we can. Um, you have ways that you can support us during this time. It is a difficult time, to say the least, for arts organizations and just the arts in general. So if you're feeling like you want a little bit of villain love in your life, uh, you can go to villaintheater.com and at the top of the page, there's a little button that says merch. And in fact, you can see what that looks like. Boom, look at this. So if you just click the merch tab, you can see that we have some stuff and some of it's already selling out. So uh, we have cups, we have t-shirts, this stuff is beautiful. And uh, if you buy it, it really does help support the theater. And this is all the first merch that we've really ever made and sold. So if you are a fan of Dylan, this is like getting in on the ground floor. You know, this stuff is gonna be worth a lot more one day. You heard it from me, you can hold me to it. And uh, you definitely should check that out. That's if you want to buy stuff. But what if you want to better yourself? Well, Villain Theater, as you know, is also a training center. So if you click on the big red button that says take a class, then you can actually sign up for one of our classes. We actually have four virtual classes starting in July. We have a brand new level one improv class, which is an amazing experience. If you've never taken an improv class and you've always thought about doing it, there's no better time than right now. First, you have the time. Second, it's all online, so it's totally safe. And third, it's the only place in the world where you can learn villain theater style improv. We're very proud of, the, of our curriculum. We're very proud of our uh, acting-based curriculum. And we believe it's special and unlike anything anywhere else. So you should definitely check that out. We also have a new class of musical theater starting. We also have a stand-up class. We also have a level two improv class. So July is a huge month for our training center and we're gonna continue with our training center through this entire time until we're able to reopen. So by all means, check that out. And if you're not interested yourself, you can tell a friend. Uh, so with that, let us go into our next game, next game. So we're gonna play a little game that we call Late Excuse. Late Excuse is a game that so many of us can relate to. One of our actors is gonna be late to work, but the thing is they actually don't know why. It's a guessing game. So what we need from you are excuses that they're gonna to have to be guessing for why they are late to work. So in the chat, go ahead and put 
excuses for why someone might be late. But since this is a comedy show and our actor is going to have to guess what you come up with, uh, they don't have to be realistic excuses. Things we hear all the time are like, my alarm clock didn't go off or I got a flat tire. So get a little more creative than that and start putting some excuses someone might give for being late to work in the chat now. I'm liking these, I'm liking these. Keep them coming. <laughs> Some of these I don't even understand, but all right. You know, it's so funny, this game, I love these suggestions, but it's so funny how in this game the suggestions like 90% of the time are all animals. I don't know what that is about human psychology. Something you like animals to be using right. Right, we're almost there. These are great suggestions. Oh my goodness. These are great suggestions. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. Uh, let's come back and uh, let us go ahead and bring out first uh, our coworkers of the person who's going to be late. Uh, the person who is late, by the way, you have to put yourself on mute so that nobody, you can't hear us and you can't see anything in the chat. So they're isolated in their soundproof room. So the, uh, the coworkers are going to be Lisa and Patrick. Come on out. Hello, hello to the two of you. Hello. All right, so here we go. These are the reasons why uh, Noah is going to be late to work, all right? So the first reason, he had to watch Hamilton on Disney Plus. For real. For real, right? Uh, the second reason, he needed to solve a murder. Okay. And then the third reason, he was having a picnic with a panda bear. As one does. As one does. You know, it, it could be, it could happen. It could happen. So, all right. We got all three of those? Yes. Yes. You, so, you got it? Okay. Got so we're going to now welcome Noah. We're going to send him a super secret private message and welcome Noah back out and see how he does. Here we go. So sorry I'm late. Wow, today was rough. Well, yeah, well, you're late. This is every day, William. Every day you're late. What's, why were you late? We're here at Weeby Warehouses. We cannot have employees showing up late. Um, I was dancing. I, I was. Oh, you were trying to get all musical and you just lost track of time. Is that it? You were. You were uh, staging yourself. You should be staging out here in the warehouse so we can load I up these say, uh, I was in a Broadway production. Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah, but which one? Was it like a, a presidential uh, signer? I, of the I was in Hamilton. I was oh. in Hamilton. Oh, oh, you know what? You used that last week. You forgive me so many excuses you forgot. You gave me that one. No. I was watching oh. Hamilton. I was watching Hamilton. Okay, uh, yeah, and uh what you know what you're like a little princess you're like a you're like a i don't know one of those conglomerates that's it's got a just got star wars and makes all the toys and i was i was taking notes about <laughs> yeah yeah you were watching hamilton but which channel which channel were you watching Hamilton on? I want to know. Channel. Oh, Disney Channel. Yeah, oh, yeah, but not just the Disney. Disney what? The Disney extra Plus. one. I was watching on Disney Plus. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure, sure, you were. Okay, you know what? No. Uh, tell me a real reason. Why? Why were you late? All right, all right, yeah. What, I, what do you like? Movie. You like, uh, sh what are you, Sherlock Holmes? I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. I work here. Why would I be solving crimes? Well, it wasn't a, it was a crime, but, 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 but nobody understood it because it was, uh, look, look, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll be honest with you. Someone in my neighborhood was murdered and I just felt like I needed to investigate it. Well, it was another yeah. M word. 
Oh, okay, we'll just take that then. And then uh, uh, I'll, I, I'm not accepting that excuse though. So let's let's go on with uh, your last final excuse and this better be good or let me tell you, you're gonna be walking the streets. So, uh, and you won't be going to the park. It ain't gonna be a, in the park. I was, I was at a picnic? Yeah, you were. Yeah, but, but who were you there with? Go ahead, let's hear this. Who were you with? Steven Seagal? No. Mm, well, he wears, he wears a lot of sunglasses and he has like little black eyes, but uh, it wasn't him. It was another little character with black eyes. Keanu Reeves? John no, it's a, it's a, it's an animal. Uh, you know, okay, I'm sorry. I just have to cut in here, boss. I am so tired. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get a little personal. I'm so tired of dating in the gay community, okay? I hate dating the twinks, the other ones, otters. You know, I just hate the twinks and the other ones. Oh, They're just- I was, I was having a picnic with a bear? Well, that's pretty close, I guess, probably, huh? But the oh, one- with a panda bear. I was having a picnic with a panda bear. Darn it. Look, William, just get back to work. I don't even want to hear any more of excuses. And if this happens again, you're fired. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well done. Oh my God. You know, watching Patrick act those out was, uh, that's the highlight of my day. I don't know about you, but that was, <laughs> that was amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh, let's, you know, let's switch the gears completely. Let's, let's get a little bit, a little bit sexy with this show. Let's play a little game now that we call Dating Profiles. Dating Profiles is a game where our actors are going to improvise headlines and pickup lines that you might see on a dating app. So for this game, what we need from you are suggestions to inspire those lines. So let's get a suggestion of objects, everyday objects. They don't have to be sexy. It's better if they're not. And uh, let's go ahead and see what we get. <laughs> Some good ones coming in already. We're gonna need to get a few of these, so keep them coming. <laughs> these are great, these are great, keep them coming. <laughs> I love how specific some of these are. We really appreciate good specific suggestions, I like that. We said they were supposed to be not sexy objects. Come on, come on. <laughs> All right, I think we got a few that I like. And, and uh, let's go ahead and go back on screen. Not back on screen. Okay, so this is, like I said, pickup lines. And the first suggestion from our actors is going to be an Xbox. An Xbox. So please welcome out Patrick. Hey, baby. Are you an Xbox? Because I'm about to blow on your cartridge. <laughs> All right, now, Joseph. Hey, baby. By the time I'm done with you, your butthole's going to look like the red ring of death. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, Victoria. I like my lovers like I like my Xbox. Able to play with me all night long. Ooh, all right. And then Noah. Hey, baby, I'm sick of my ex's box. Can I move over to yours? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. And then um, finally for Xbox, let's have Janellis. Hey, baby, I'm not afraid of two thumbs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Woo, is it getting warm? I think it's getting warm in here. Oh, my goodness. All right. So our next suggestion coming from the chat uh, is going to be a cactus. A cactus. And once again, we'll start with Patrick. Hey, baby. You a cactus because I'm thirsty as fuck. <laughs> Ooh. All right, let's have Lisa Legend. Technical difficulty. I I don't like my lovers like 
cactuses. I don't like them prickly. <laughs> Me neither. There you go. And then how about Joseph? Hello, my love. By the time I'm done with you, you will have all your hair standing on end. Ooh, my goodness, in character. And then Noah. Hey, baby, I'm a lot like a cactus. I just need a little bit of moisture and I can last a really long time. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then Janellis. Hey, baby, I may be dry, but if you cut me down, I'll squirt. Ooh, my goodness, and Victoria. I like my lovers like I like my cactus. It will to make it hurt. Oh my goodness, an audio only, even more mysterious. How about that? Okay, we're gonna go for a new suggestion, brand new suggestion in the chat. Uh, this one just is so gross, I wanna see what they can do with it. It's a hairball, parentheses, from a cat. So hairball's the suggestion. Let's get Lisa, legend. I like my lovers like I like my hairballs on the carpet. <laughs> and now Janellis. Hey baby, you're stuck in my throat. Oh my goodness, and now Patrick. I was gonna say that too. And now Noah. Hey baby, I'm like a hairball. You can always find me near someplace. <laughs> and Victoria, Victoria on screen. I like my lovers like I like my hairballs. Giving me something to choke on. No. Oh my goodness, and then let's get one more from Patrick. Redemption. Victoria said it. Oh my no. god! <laughs> it's just, you, you know, you just can't win. But that is dating profiles. Good job, everybody. Oh my goodness. Uh, if that game looks like a weekly squirm, it's because it does. <laughs> that game is the most uncomfortable. It should game. make you squirm. For me. Oh yeah, keep it, keep it, keep it. I don't know. We don't have to keep it anything in the future. Anywho, let's go. We have just one more game left. Uh, and we're excited to bring it to you. It is one of our newer games. It is a guessing game we call King of Sharks. All right, so once again, we have one of our actors isolated in a soundproof chamber because they are going to have to be guessing something. The thing they'll be guessing is their investor pitch. That's right. Our actor is going to be pitching a revolutionary new product to our very own shark investors, but they don't know what it is because we're going to get the suggestion from you. So what we need from you are a couple of things. We need a feature. What does the product do? Meaning what is its main feature? We need the celebrity. Who is the celebrity spokesperson for this product? We need a disclaimer, something that's like a side effect or a bad feature of the product, a disclaimer that would need to be on the package. And then finally, we need the product name. And this doesn't have to have anything to do with all the others. But let's start putting these in the chat. <laughs> oh my God, someone, some of us are putting the entire thing in there. This is great, this is great. Keep it coming. We got the we got the celebrity. Let's go ahead and keep going with the feature and the other ones. The feature and the disclaimer. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Some of these are great. I love that we have more than 40 people in this in this chat room tonight. This is amazing. It's so good that you're all joining us on your Friday night. We're happy that you're here. We're happy to be on the show for you. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. I'm, I'm reading all these suggestions. There's some good ones. Let's keep them coming, though. some of these just slightly to make it work for the game, but these are looking great. Okay, these are so weird, I love it. Hey, 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 hey,
<laughs> all right. You know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we got it all. I think we got it all. So let's go ahead and bring you back on screen. And let's welcome out our shark investors tonight. They are going to be Patrick, Victoria, and Joseph. Come on out. Hello, hello, sharks, how you doing? Great, great. Great, okay. So our entrepreneur is isolated in their soundproof chamber right now, but here's the things that they're going to be trying to pitch to you that you'll have to coach them into guessing, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and start with you, Patrick, the feature. It's a simple feature. Uh, what it does is it picks your boogers for you. Okay, so key word is we wanna get the word booger in there because it's a great word and we don't say it often enough. Okay, the second, uh, Victoria is gonna be the celebrity and it's none other than Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> okay, she's the spokesperson for this product. And I'm then the, uh, <laughs> the side effect or the disclaimer, Joseph, it's uh, unfortunately it sprays glitter everywhere. Okay, it gets glitter everywhere. Keyword being glitter. Okay, getting that everywhere. All right, and then uh, finally, the name of it is going to be the Banks on Banks. Makes no sense, but it just sounded funny. And so now, let's go ahead and welcome Janellis back into the room. I'm going to send her a secret message here. Janellis, come on back. Come on back. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, so the revolutionary product that you were pitching to this room of sharks is none other than something called the Banks on Banks. Yes, thank you, Jeffrey. And thank you all to all of our sharks for allowing me this opportunity to showcase to you an incredible new product called Banks on Banks. We promise that our product will end income inequality and will provide every American household with the right uh, tools to be successful and thrive in this beautiful country. All right, well, um, thank you for that. I think we can all agree that it's a very fascinating product. I just. I uh, have a few questions. Your, your, your features are really incredible. It's just like, it's like a gold mine, right? It's like you're, you're digging for gold, right? Absolutely. Banks on banks has left people with a, a surplus of gold in their households. A surplus of gold. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, but, you know, I was thinking, uh, I, I understood it differently, I guess, that it would come from, I don't know, just a, a place a little more personal than an actual gold mine. You know, maybe something on your body. Am I? We have beautiful um, uh, necklaces that are engraved with our insignia. It says banks on banks. Instead of mom or daddy, you can wear banks on banks necklace. Well, definitely the jewelry sounds very enticing, but the feature of it is something I, I, I think it's just in, it, remarkable because we don't have it. How, how many times do you have to do it yourself? You know what I mean? And now this takes care of that. You know, I, I'm sorry, some of my uh, favorite nights. Whereas uh, growing up was uh, dancing to disco, you know, I was, um, God, what's that word for, for dancing to disco? Disco uh, dancing? No, 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 not that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little dancing? different. Do you know, put a little something in it. I was born in 1990, so I don't know much about disco. Oh, well, you know, if you have an issue, grab a tissue. You know what I mean? <laughs> What else would you grab a tissue for? Well, oftentimes when it's around five in the morning, I do tend to cry into my pillow, but I've chosen tissues now to, uh, to not get so much mascara on the sheets. And what else comes out of your face that you would need a tissue for? Well, uh, the Sahara Desert has been, uh, you know, has plumes flying over Florida, so my nose has been runny as hell. Oh my God, what's in your nose? It's not. It's not another word for that. Mucus. Another word. Juice. <laughs> oh man, uh, you know, my grandmother would always say, you know, stop it with those mocos. You know what I mean? Yes, our product allows for one a person to wipe their nose of the boogers once and be done forever. Amazing. So, it, it, so instead of you having to do it, it does it for you. Wonderful, incredible. Uh, you know, I have to think about this a little bit more. Okay, so I'll take it no over. Problem. To my next no problem. Story. Thank you, Mark Cuban. Thank you. Uh, yes, I had a question. You mentioned um, you were uh, a ninety baby. So I think it's fantastic the person that you're getting to sponsor this. I mean, plenty of millennials are going to appeal uh, to her. So, 
I mean, my question is, how do you plan on getting her to come and and, and um, sponsor this product? Well, Alanis Morissette is having a comeback. She is the queen of the 90s, and she will be the queen of the 20s as well. Well, I was thinking we could, I mean, a younger demographic would probably be better. Um, someone, um, she was in a, a few of those movies, what was it, Hunger Games, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Uh, what's her name? Yes, we are super excited to welcome a white, mediocre starlet like Jennifer Lawrence to our brand. Perfect. Perfect. Incredible. I'm sold so far. Well, uh, I've got to tell you, I'm really, really loving this product, although I am a little concerned uh, about the side effect. I think that people might get confused that perhaps uh, they're going to be just throwing a bunch of Mariah Carey movies uh, their way. I, I, I don't know if she has many, but I know that there's one in particular. Um, I'm just concerned. There is a disclaimer that our product has on the side of every box. It, the product does come with an unusual amount of glitter. Oh my God. But, but is, is, it, is it actually in there or is it just, you know, convulsingly, uh, you know, just glitter everywhere? I mean, this is what I'm concerned about. Is it Mariah Carey DVDs or is it actually glitter? Well, when you get the product, you'll know more, but uh, disclaimer, um, this product will uh, have an overwhelming amount of glitter placed all over your face in exchange for removal of the boogers. Oh my God, so it's just like coming out of a fire hose. Well, I am, um, I'm gonna be out on that. Uh, I, I, that's, that's too much for me. I'm in, I will pledge $50,000. For how much percent? For 20. What is that? <laughs> Everything that you're asking for, I will give it to you. But okay. I want 99% of the company. Well, uh, this certainly is not the American dream, but small businesses must make do. I'll go with Mark Cuban. Hey. Hey. <laughs> nice job, nice job. Let's welcome out the entire cast of Comedy Clash. Come on out. Oh my goodness, well done to all of you tonight. This has been a ton of fun. This is the just the first half of our Friday night show. We are so glad that so many of you have chosen to join us tonight in our live stream and those of you watching this down the road in the future. We are Villain Theater. We are so happy to still be here for you every single weekend. One of the things we love to say is we never miss a weekend. And so we appreciate you being part of our community and supporting us during this time. I just want to remind you one more time, check out villaintheater.com and check out the classes that we are offering. You can do these right from your very own home. They are personalized and live instruction and uh, absolutely an experience you don't want to miss. So thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for the Musical Theater Showcase. You're not going to want to miss it. And we will see you from Comedy Clash next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, see you in the